Um, this is uh, Web Map Application Design, and I'm Bill Beaver. And the purpose is to develop a web mapping application to understand uh, web map design and to create an accessible body of knowledge about web map design. Um, now, I'll be talking about uh, my client, uh, Spring Stewardship Institute. Uh, I will talk about the application specifications. I will talk about the uh, design resources that I'm using, uh, about the application structure, a uh, little demo, and uh, results and conclusion. Now, the Spring Stewardship Institute is in the Museum of Northern Arizona Research Center in Flagstaff, Arizona. And uh, the question I hear is um, springs? What are springs? You know, those are things that bounce up and down. Um, springs are ecosystem of heightened management attention, serving as hydrogeologic windows into aquifers, as critical water supplies, as keystone ecosystems, and as refugia for rare or unique species, remarkable paleontological repositories, and focal points of human culture development. So that's from the horse's mouth there. Now, um, the data I'm using is the Desert Landscape Conservation Cooperative, and uh, the, um, the layer is on the Springs Institute um, uh, GeoServer. Uh, it encompasses 217,000 square miles, uh, almost 11,000 known, known springs. There is perhaps 5,000 or more additional springs that aren't mapped. And it's recently been expanded in Mexico, and uh, you can see there's nothing in Mexico because they haven't released the data yet. Um, this project is, uh, the app is public science. Um, the reason for this, as you see over here, there's a lot of blue, a lot of blue dots there. And those are springs that are known, but um, they've never been studied or looked at. Um, the green dots are ones that, the, that have been verified and uh, ones that have had um, uh, people actually go and uh, look at them and, and do studies of them. Um, uh, and so the purpose is to get more green on the map and, and less blue. Um, and so the user um, can uh, put in um, annotations for new springs or they can annotate uh, existing springs. Now there's some security. Um, uh, springs are kind of um, uh, being uh, protected by people that own them. <laughs> and uh, often with guns. <laughs> um, also, there's uh, rare and endangered species there. Um, there might be a mountain lion den. You don't want people, uh, the public, to go visit a spring that's been new, uh, newly found. Also, um, existing springs um, that might have bad coordinates, uh, it might not exist anymore. It might have been destroyed. Um, they had a... Uh, bad habit of dynamiting springs to make them work better, and uh, it usually didn't work. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, now I'm gonna talk about design resources that I'm, I'm gonna use. Uh, during the 1990s, several important thinkers came into prominence with their speculations about how computers and humans would interact. These people and their ideas have had a tremendous, often hidden impact on programmers, program paradigms, and the present status of computation in our society. And the three people I'm going to talk about briefly is um, Edward Tuft, uh, Brenda Laurel, and Richard Stallman. Um, Edward Tuft of Yale University, he's written several books. One of them was Envisioning Information. He has a host of ideas, uh, hundreds of ideas. And a um, couple things I got from it, uh, remove the clutter. This is information design. Uh, information is inherently multivariate. And a document is a holistic experience. It's not just the map, it's what the map does, it's what you get out of the map, it's all the other things attached to the map. Um, and here's an a, a example, a famous example of his, of uh, Charles uh, Joseph Menard's Napoleon Russian campaign. Napoleon entered Russia with a half a million men and left Russia with 10,000. 
On the bottom, you can see uh, the temperature when they left Moscow till they reached the Elbe. OK, uh, another thing I'm interested in is landmarks. Uh, humans orient themselves using landmarks. So if you live in Tucson, which uh, photograph's looking west? Which is looking east? Can, can you tell? Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, and you know, you, you see landmarks. Uh, one is U of A Mall, uh, Rincon Mountains, um, A Mountain, Tumac Hill. If you know downtown, that's the old temple. Um, all of these things are things you orient towards. So uh, it would be nice to mark up these pictures with, with this information. Um, Brenda Laurel, design patterns. She worked for several companies, uh, uh, started a couple on her, on her own. Um, interface design, her most famous book was Computers as Theater. And she stated four causes of human computer usage. Acts, actions, which are nonlinear. Application, which is the result of actions. Representation, what a user sees. And agency, what happens behind the scenes. Um, design patterns are reusable solutions to the problems of application, action, representation, and agency. So I thought about, OK, what are map design patterns? And I found a, uh, several analysis, exploratory data analysis, model-driven analysis, uh, exploratory learning, modification. And the one that I'm using for my application is annotation. So the user can add content to a map through specific annotation layers. Uh, this can include a specific feature with attributes, um, save results of analysis, which I'm not doing, uh, but I'll be doing commentary photographs and video. And you can geocode the vid video, uh, UTC format, and also markup in the form of comments and SVG graphics. Uh, video can also be geocoded, time-coded, and related to a spatial track. And the interest in the spatial track is people are trying to find these springs, and it's, they're really difficult to find. And uh, if the Spring Stewardship Institute, the people want to go and do another uh, actual research project on the spring, they'll have information on how to get there, which also uh, probably needs to be secure. Now, uh, there's design patterns and programs. Uh, one's a module. You take the module out, does the program break? You change the module, does the program break? The other is the model control view pattern. Uh, this is the pattern that all mobile devices use. Uh, the transaction pattern. Anytime you fill out a form, use a transaction pattern. Um, Esri has a nice uh, transaction pattern called the attribute inspector, which for various reasons I didn't use. I sort of rolled my own, and um, that slowed me down immensely. <laughs> Um, the promise deferred pattern is a major pattern for mapping because you might be querying um, uh, layers on four or five, six different servers, and this is asynchronous, so you don't know when it's going to come back. So um, this allows you to control this uh, and have knowledge of when all things have returned so you can do the analysis with your results. OK, uh, open source, Richard Stallman, the Free Software Foundation, the GNU Manifesto, 1993. Uh, this set the philosophical foundation, uh, the political activism, and the legal status of open source or free software. Mostly people call it open source now, but uh, he started with uh, free software. OK, um, now versus proprietary, there's important tension between proprietary and open source software. Um, you can have huge resources allocated to a problem. Um, and open source allows for tinkering and development of new generations of programmers. Uh, open source can solve problems often overlooked by large corporations. And by distributing talent can often result in a superior product. Often they can't. <laughs> uh, open source and proprietary software both compete and complement each other. So um, the conclusion of this is I want a rich document. I want to use landmarks. Uh, I want to use interface design. I want to use both open source and proprietary software. And um, it's mostly open layers and um, uh, the ArcGIS for JavaScript. Um, here's the program structure. Um, the main map is an Esri map. The other map is a open layers map. Um, I have two roles. I'm not using much uh, with the admin at the moment. 
Um, this is sort of the annotation. I would like to link videos to tracks. Um, here is um, the metadata for an iPad. It's the image metadata. And you can see uh, GPS bearing, uh, date created, the altitude, and of course the lat long is uh, things I'm interested in. Um, video tracks, well there's 14 additional tracks, but nothing is assigned for GPS. So um, I'm using YouTube video, uh, which has been uploaded, and YouTube uses those tracks so they might be erased. Okay, uh, application structure, there was four different uh, data sources. Uh, this is the schema. And let's look at a demo. Uh, this is Government Spring, this is uh, near Greer. Um, this is the, the DLCC uh, data from that. So I'm going to annotate this, I add a, a discoverer, um, and then I fill out all the annotation information. I'm going to add five photos. Um, this is old containment. Uh, there were these containment, containment trials, and there's four or five of them, and the stream seems to be moving south, uh, upstream of, of all things. I mean, the spring uh, is moving south. Okay, um, here's the current containment, and I want to mark up this, I want to say it's going east because I don't have bearing information on it. So I mark up this, and this is my markup uh, area. Um, okay, and then that puts a little leaf on uh, where the spring is. Uh, and then uh, I want to look at what I just did. Here it is. Um, I want to add government spring because I forgot to put the name on there. Uh, then here's uh, the images, and here's the full size that's a link on there. Okay, um, and then uh, in the annotations I can view and edit annotations, delete and add annotations to this. Um, now this is a spring that I, I don't know where it is on the map, uh, so I'm putting in my lat long. Um, I'm uploading a track, and uh, here's the annotation of the track. Here's the video form. And um, here's the video on uh, my um, uh, Postgres uh, GIS server, uh, database. Now, at the moment, I don't have much on here, but um, this is the open layers map that will contain the video and stuff. So I'm having trouble linking the tracks and the, and the video together, but should be able to solve that. OK, the results. Um, there's the location of the application. Um, there's the source uh, code, and uh, there's a survey for uh, a beta test. And I'm going to put this on the listserv uh, hopefully soon, so people can try it out. Uh, something you can do for, for during the holidays. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Uh, so um, I looked at uh, photo data, and uh, you can see I got mixed results. Um, the elevation for uh, Three cameras in the same location differed from my um, GPS device by um, 50 meters. So the elevation isn't very accurate. So I'm suggesting the post-processing done for elevation. Um, and the barren, bearings in coordinates, sometimes they work, sometimes they doesn't. Uh, the things don't work too well in the field. I'm, I'm a little worried about field uh, stuff with this. So I would suggest in the field using this, a compass and a notebook and your camera. <laughs> and doing all these things and not relying on the, on the exit. Uh, okay, so my conclusion, I missed that. Um, whoops. Oh, I see. Um, the application is completing. The application and code represents the working body knowledge for developing further mapping application, and there's always more to do. And uh, there's the credits. I'd like to thank Jerry Ledbetter and Larry Stevens, Spring Stewardship Institute, and all you guys who've been wonderful. Thank you. <laughs>